Welcome back. Thousands of Somalis have gathered in the capital Mogadishu to pray for rain as a severe drought continues to ravage the country. Prime Minister Ali Hassan Kairi was present at the event, which was also attended by many residents and Islamic scholars. In his remarks, the Prime Minister asked for divine intervention to leave the drought burden from the Somali people. He also called on Somalis to help each other and join hands to overcome the drought situation. Millions of Somalis face the risk of starvation due to a severe drought that has hit the country. The UN has also warned that the country is on the brink of famine. President Mohamed Abdullahi Famaju has declared the drought a national disaster and has urged aid agencies to quickly respond to the country's humanitarian needs. The United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Stuart Simington, has praised the efforts of the Edo State Government and its implementation of people-oriented policies. Mr. Simington gave the commendation after inspecting the Lady Mechanic Workshop inside the Government House premises in Benin City, the Edo State capital. It is work in progress at the Lady Mechanic Workshop at the Edo State Government House in Benin City, the Edo State capital. The center is an initiative of a Doe State Governor, Godwin Abasaki led administration to empower the youth through skills training. The Edo State Governor, Godwin Abasaki, ushers in an august visitor, the United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Stuart Simington, to see things for himself. Shortly after the tour, the American Ambassador commends the Edo State Government for coming up with economic policies beneficial to the people. Think about uh, how Nigerians, all Nigerians, are working together to solve Nigeria's problems. And I must say that uh, I've had many interchanges, but none uh, has uh, so clearly stated for me um, the challenge. Um, and in the words of, of your governor, Nigerians have to solve Nigerian problems, and I couldn't agree more. What I think we need to do is to make sure that every Nigerian knows any good thing that we know that's being done anywhere with our help so that they can bring that to their state. Governor Basaki will state's commitment to fulfilling campaign promises of providing over 200,000 jobs within the administration's tenure. I think I feel vindicated that we can make this place work. We, I've always said the issues with us, or the key issue with us, is waste. You know, once we begin to think about carbon waste, whether you call it corruption, you, you know, call it ineptitude, once we think about putting all our resources to work, you'll, you'll, you'll see the turnaround and how wealthy we'll become as a people. The American diplomat and his team were also shown vehicles refurbished by the Lady Mechanic Workshop before leaving. A group of African asylum seekers are using art to connect with locals as they struggle to integrate in a small Italian town. Most of them are young men from African countries like Mali, Nigeria, Ghana, and Guinea. Trevi is a small medieval town with a population of between 8,000 and 9,000 people in the heart of Italy's Umbrian Hills. Last summer, Trevi began hosting a small group of migrants as they waited for their asylum demands to be looked into. There is a sense of welcome in Trevi, that is, well ancient. Now the problem for the population, for our citizens, is accepting another kind of migrant, one that is not white, but colored. So the perception is a bit different. The mayor explains that Italian law prevents migrants from working until their asylum application is granted and that the physical and linguistic isolation can make it hard for them to integrate into society. But a local artist has thought of a way to bridge that divide through an unexpected medium. The fruits of six months of working with the group are on display in the Trevi Museum as part of an exhibition called The Art of Migration. Around 100 people attended opening night for the show, which features works done by several of the Trevi migrants in collaboration with Australian artist and art therapist Virginia Ryan. The works touch on their harrowing journeys across endless deserts and seas and have been dealing with since arriving in Trevi. What I've been seeing happen over the weeks is people portraying the most tender scenes. And so 
I think that to me that's the word that comes out more than anything else as the, as a kind of collective word to describe this this particular exhibition, which we call the art of migration, is tenderness. The young men aged 19 to 30 are being housed in a hotel in the valley, four kilometers from the city center. A room at the back of the hotel has become their art studio with donated paints and recycled materials available to them when they like. Rome is worried that this coming migration season, which usually lasts from April to October, the arrivals could well exceed the 180,000 people who made it last year, overwhelming Italy in terms of accommodation, security and asylum systems. Well, let's take over to South Africa to meet Joseph Matatu, the country's first qualified blind barrister. He works at a coffee shop in Cape Town where he's showing people that his disability should never come between them and a good cup of coffee. Take a look. Joseph, who made a name for himself as South Africa's first qualified blind barrister, was not born this way. His eyesight started to deteriorate when he was about three years old because of glaucoma, an eye condition that damages the eye's optic nerve and gets worse over time. He eventually lost his sight completely in 2010. Joseph trained as a barrister at an exclusive coffee shop in town and later landed a job at Blindania in 2014. He says with practice, he's been able to master the art of making great coffee. The barrister relies on his heightened senses and is able to grind, brew and serve up a cup with ease and without spilling a drop. Thank you. I came here in 2014 Booster to pursue my studies um, as I was struggling throughout the years uh, to finish my metric and stuff like that because of my poor eyesight and stuff. So it started in 2014 and when it started actually because it's something that I like um, making hot coffees and teas and stuff like that. So it started right there so it's something that I do it from my heart and I feel comfortable when I'm making coffee and this is why I'm still making coffee even today. About 97% of the blind and partially sighted people in South Africa are unemployed, according to the country's National Council for the Blind. Most of them don't have access to specialized training and find it difficult to get employed. Joseph says it's been a long journey for him, but he decided he would not let his disability stand in the way of a productive life. And that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Timmy Tokwe Fagwini.